Okay, so what we're doing, the point of this lesson is we are, uh, we, we've been graphing for a few days. It's actually been a day, but right, for, we've done a few lessons of, of graphing. So I give you the equation, you have to come up with the graph. What, to, what this is all about is I give you the graph, you have to come up with the equation. So it's very similar in some ways, but it's moving backwards. But all of the understanding we have about how to graph is going to help with this. And it comes back down to those variables, A, C, and D. Except what we have to do now, which is going to help with the applications that we're going to do next, is we actually have to talk about the last variable that's part of the equation, which you haven't seen before. Because they don't do it in parabolas. You don't do it in grade 10. Um, and that's called the k value. Okay, so this is new. This is something you haven't seen before. And to me, probably the other part of it will seem fairly straightforward, but the k value part is gonna seem strange and different and difficult at first. But if we just, if we focus on that part, because we know that's the new hard part, we should be able to bring it all together. Okay, that's the hope. So, this is, oops, am I already unfrozen here? Okay, I am. This is what the equations will look like now. Y equals A sine, that's normal. The K value goes there. Then I need another bracket, X minus C. Close both brackets, plus D. And for cosine, notice I'm leaving a big space. I'm going to write in there y equals a cos. It's the same. You just replace sine with cos, right? There, there's no difference between them. K bracket x minus c bracket bracket plus d. Okay. And so the k value is a change in period. So what we're going to notice is not all the graphs that we're given will have a period of 360. Everything else is the same. All the properties of sine and cosine are the same. Amplitude is still the distance from the zero line to the max and to the min. The zero line is still your D value. Your shift is the same where it starts. But we have to do a bit of extra work to figure out what the period is and how to turn that into a k value. If my period is 720, that's not k. <laughs> All right? So we have to figure out what k is. So that's one of the things we're going to get to. Everybody okay so far? There's a note here. A big k value. That's in quotations, because what do I mean by big? I mean like bigger than one. So like two, three, four, ten. You never see ten really, not in applications maybe, but not in these graphs that we're going to do. But if it's a two, a three, or a four, something like that, that's a big number because it's bigger than one. That actually makes the period shorter. So it's going to take a graph that was long, like 360, and crunch it down like that or something. Right? So one whole cycle, what does it mean for the period to be shorter? One whole cycle happens in a smaller space, doesn't take as long. Instead of 360, maybe it's 180. And a little k value, again in quotations, what do I mean by that? Little means like a fraction. So one half, one quarter, one third, something like that, a smaller number, smaller than one, okay, bigger than zero, makes the period longer. Why does this make sense and fit in terms of what we've done in the past. Does anybody know? Does anybody see why it might, like a big K number, you'd think it would make it bigger. That's just our intuition. What about the equation, the way we've written it, tells us that it has the opposite effect. Anybody have an idea?
It's in brackets. Remember how the horizontal shift, when it's plus something, you're actually going to the left. And when it's minus something, you're actually going to the right. It's opposite of what you would expect. It's the same with the K, the K's in brackets. So you could use that to help you remember that that's what has to happen, right? The K is in brackets, so it has the opposite effect. It's a neat thing in mathematics where that's always the case for functions and transformations, okay? So keep that in mind. Now we're gonna calculate case or and calculate the period. So in the end, um, it, it'll work itself out as long as you can remember how to calculate it. Okay, so before we get to the first example, we're gonna write down a couple of little formulas in order to turn the K value into the period or turn the period into the K value, uh, which is what we're actually gonna do, we need a little formula. So what, how do you find K? If I'm looking at a graph, I can look at the graph and figure out what the period is by looking at the scale. So I already know the period, I have to turn it into a K value. So if the formula is, it's not like quadratic formula, it's not very long, it's not like uh, cosine law, it's 360 divided by the period. Why 360? What do you think? Yeah, exactly right. That's the normal period length, right? That's the regular period for sine and cosine. If we were graphing, we would be given the equation and we would have the K value. And we would have to use the K value to turn it into the period. So it turns out all we do is rearrange the first formula and it ends up being 360 divided by K. You are never gonna have to do that in this course this year. So this is the one that we need to know, how to calculate a K value. But both of them are fairly simple and similar. Everybody good? So folks, you need to memorize that formula. That's something you need to know. Okay, you need, to, you need to know how to calculate K. Then the only other thing we're adding on is how do you calculate the period? For some of you that might be intuitive though, you're just gonna be able to figure that out. After a few examples, I think everybody will be able to do that part. But if you forgot the formula, you'd be stuck. Okay, so we're gonna practice a few both directions before we get into this. Now again, A and B, are not things we're gonna have to do in this course, but I thought I'd throw them in there anyway. So what's happening with A and B is that looks like an equation that I've been given that I have to graph. And if I was gonna graph it, I would have to calculate the period. Okay, whoops, I'm gonna leave a little space. Period. And the formula is 360 divided by K. Well, in this case, what is K? It's two, because it's the number that's multiplied by X. If it was out front, it would be an A value. It's in the brackets and it's not added, it's multiplied, so it's the K value, very good. So K is two. So in this case, the, the period is 360 divided by two, which is 180. What about the next one, the K value? One over three, right? So it's the period divided by one third. Hmm, how do you do that on your calculator? If I just do this, 360 divided by one divided by three, the calculator is not gonna give me the right answer. So you get a couple of options. 360 divided by bracket one divided by three. That will give me the right answer. So the right answer is 1080. Or use 
your fraction button, if you have one, 360 over 1 divided by 3. That will give me the right answer. So it is 1080. And again, a fraction, a small number, made our period bigger. So picture that graph. Picture cosine, but stretched way out longer. That's all it would look like. Everybody okay so far? Okay, next one we're going to calculate the K value because we're given the period. And again, the little formula is 360 divided by the period. Period is 720, 360 divided by 720. And that has to be reduced. 360 over, oh, 360 over 720. If you have a calculator that does fractions, that's awesome because it'll reduce it for you. If you do 360 divided by 720, depending on what mode you're in, it might still give you the fraction answer. If it gives you the decimal answer, that's fine as well. 0.5 works just fine for that K value. Three sixty divided by ninety is four. So C and D is what we're going to have to do for this lesson that we're about to do, because we're going to be given the graph and have to write the equation. And to write the equation, we need the A and now the K and the C and the D values. And once you have those, you can write the equation. I made all the graphs in the lessons in the homework. Um, I gave you one cycle, but I did this dotted line to remind us that these functions do actually go on forever, right? They do actually keep going. It's a lot harder if you're not given one cycle. So we're going to stick to one cycle where you, it's obvious where it starts and where it ends. Uh, but technically speaking, these graphs do go on forever. If you just type this into GeoGebra or Desmos to graph it, it would show you the whole function. And it's a little bit harder to see like where yours starts and ends when it does that. Uh, so keep that in mind. So the dotted line is there just to remind us of that because otherwise I find that a lot of people sort of forget that fact and start to think it only exists in that one spot. But it's irrelevant for uh, the work that we're doing. Here's the biggest tip that I can give you when you are coming up with the equation given the graph. Because you're thinking to yourself, I have to write it out. This is, is this sine or cosine? This is sine, right? So I have to do this. Well, like 2 sine uh, 5x plus 60. I'm making this up. This is not correct. Minus 3. If you have to write that whole thing out and you're like, man, that's overwhelming. That's a lot of work. So you, you break it down into steps. And what we actually have to do is find the A value, the K value, the C value, and the D value. So my tip in particular, if you like to break bigger problems down into smaller parts, is write those out just like I've done with blanks. And now you've got a goal. Find each of those things. Fill in each of those four blanks. And then you just write out the equation and you're done. And you're going to do each one of them individually. So you're not doing this big problem. You have, you have a, a goal. You have tasks set for yourself. And it doesn't matter where you start. I think it'll jump out different for everyone. If it's the start that jumps out at you, then you start with C. Again, it's going to be different for everybody. Looks like some of you are already starting. That's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with D. I don't know why that's just kind of what I always do. That when we graph, that's what we start with. So I guess maybe I keep it the same. So the D is the zero line. And what is the zero line? Well, I just have to look. Now be careful. Now if I give you the start and the end and it's sine, the d zero line hopefully is easy. Because sine, look, I can find the five points. That's another tip. 
Color in the five points. Use all that practice for graphing that you've done. Okay, sometimes when it's cosine, people put the zero line in the wrong spot, so watch for that. Be very careful that your zero line is correct. So what is the zero line in this case? It's two, y equals two, therefore, what? D is two, and I can fill in that blank. You don't have to write it twice, it's up to you. I'm gonna write it over here, because it's gonna show in the lesson how I got that the D value is two. I did the zero line first, and therefore I was able to conclude that D is two. Next, again, I'm going to do the amplitude because when we graph, that's what we usually do. Now, there's a formula for amplitude, but I bet you're going to like this better. If anybody doesn't like this and they're struggling with this, I'll show you the formula. I'm not going to talk about it right now because I think it might confuse things more. The amplitude is the distance from the zero line to the max and the zero line to the min, right? So if I zoom in here and I go, and as long as I have the right zero line, how far did I go up to get to the max? I like that you said two. It's four squares and sometimes people say four. But it's two, right? Because every square was only a half. So because the scale's right there, you can easily see that I went up one, two. From two to four is an increase of two. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna check how far do I go down to the min? One, two. It's the same, I know I have the right zero line. And I know now my amplitude is two. Is there a reflection for this graph? Is this graph reflected? Nope. So you don't have to write this down, but I'm going to again a couple of times for the note. No reflection. With these together, therefore, what can I conclude? I just found my A value, didn't I? Because that's where I would get the amplitude from if I was graphing. So it's the same thing. Whoops, <laughs> I wrote A again. Uh, two, there we go. Everybody okay so far? Now I'm gonna look at where the start is and where the end is. This is a little bit of a different order from when we were graphing. So here's the start, do you agree? What point is that? This is the same scale we've been working with. Not every scale we, we've done is that way, but it's very good. Negative 60, because we're counting by 30s. So it's one back from negative 90 or negative 30, negative 60 if you're counting from zero. And then what about the end? Again, we're counting by 30s. So from 270 up 30 more is 300, very good. So what's my period? It's the end minus the start. That's, this is something you need to know. Remember I said before, you have to know how to find, this is the other new thing we're doing. You have to know how to find the period, which is the end minus the start. Not the start minus the end, you'll have it backwards. The end minus the start. 300 minus negative 60, which is 300 plus 60, which is 360. So this first graph we're doing doesn't have a change in period. That was on purpose, but other ones will. Still has a K value. How do I find the K value? Very good. That's right, 360 divided by the period. 
360 divided by the period. What's 360 divided by 360? One. So my k value in this case is one, which is why it's, it's always been one and we've just been ignoring it when we were graphing. We missed something or I missed something. The start is the C value, right? And look, we're done. We have to actually write the equation, but we've got all the work done. Just like that. So that's what it looks like. And it'll be the same every single time. Not every graph is the same, obviously, but it'll be the same progression of steps. The same focus. Get your A, get your K, get your C, get your D. You break it down into those straightforward steps, you'll find a lot of success with this. So it is Y equals A sine bracket K bracket X minus C bracket bracket and there will take some getting used to writing it and wh what goes where and what it's supposed to look like. That will take a bit of getting used to, but hopefully won't be too challenging. So the A is 2, 2, sine. K is 1, so we don't actually need it. But you could write it in. I'm going to leave it, and then I'm going to write it again below with the K value in there. X minus C, minus negative 60 is plus 60. That's a mistake that even though you know that fact, and then plus D, which is two, is plus two. Even though you know that fact, that if it's a shift to the left, it's gotta be adding in the brackets, that's an easy mistake to make. When you're rushing on a test or you're just not thinking about it, so you gotta stop and think about the C value and make sure you change the sign. Any questions, what do we think? Doable. If I had written it with the K value, it would look like this. If that felt similar to graphing, that's good. I think it should. Like there's a lot of overlap in your understanding there. We tried to do it in almost the exact same order as we would have if we were graphing. So again, that's a habit that sort of takes a load off your brain and I think can be really helpful. All right, let's do the next one. This is the kind of thing that people do. Draw the zero line there. To some of you, if you're visual, you'll see right away that that's wrong. But some people might not. And again, if you're rushing, or sometimes the scale is way smaller. Like when you look at the worksheet, some of them have a lot more squares. There's, a, there's a, the scale, the grid is a lot more condensed and it can make it, it can make like play visual tricks on you, tricks on your eyes. How do I know this is wrong? I'm going two squares to the max and four squares to the min. So that's wrong. That cannot happen. So that's something you can think about when you're drawing in, if you're going to do that, if you're going to draw in the zero line. So the zero line is actually here because now I'm three squares up and three squares down. So the zero line is on the x-axis. And now I'm equal up and down, and so I know it's right. So the first thing we're gonna do is a zero line. Y equals zero, therefore D is zero. Again, before you even start, you may say to yourself, I know that when I'm finding the equation, what I'm actually doing is finding the A, the K, the C, and the D. So you're not just directly finding the equation, you're finding each of these things individually. Amplitude, well, I already went up and down. 
It's three squares, but three squares doesn't count as three because again, it looks like I'm counting by 0.5s. So how much is that? 1.5. I'm 1.5 up, I'm 1.5 down. Again, there's no reflection. And with those two things together, A is 1.5. If there's a reflection, I think it'll jump out at you, right? So hopefully you'll catch that. Even when you go and write the equation, you might look back and ask yourself, is it flipped or not? Now I'm doing my start and my end. Because I've highlighted one cycle, it's easy to find the start. This is obviously cosine. There's the start. Something different about this one though. Does anybody know what it is? It's 90, yeah, very good. What's different about this question? It's not the same, what were you gonna say, Miriam? The, the, the scale of the x-axis is different. So this is counting two squares to 30, 30, 60, 90. One square is 15. Every one of these questions, that's something you're probably gonna have to do is figure out how much one square is. But that's exactly right, this is 90. So somehow you have to figure out what value that is. So the start is 90, therefore C is 90, positive 90. The end, So from 240, I add 15, which is 255. And then 15 more, which is 270. Or I add 30, because I'm going two squares. So 270. How do I find the period? Yeah. N minus two. Right, so the period is the end minus the start. You don't have to write that down every time. You can just do 270 minus 90, which works out to 180, very good. And then from that, I can find the K value using our little formula that we have to memorize. 360 divided by the period. 360 divided by 180 is? Two, very good. Looks like a bunch of you are ahead of me. So I can fill, so K is two, A is 1.5, C is 90. Again, you do not have to write these twice. You can either write them down the side here, like I've been doing, or you can write them out like this, whatever your preference is, obviously. This is cosine, no flip, Y equals you, have, you do have to know this, right? You have to know where the A, the K, and the C, and the D go. Hopefully we kind of get that from doing the graphing. So A. Cos. I do a big bracket, my K, and then a little bracket. X minus 90 because it's a shift to the right, so it's gotta be opposite. And you don't need the plus zero at the end, but it's not wrong to put it. So I got it in green, and you could just as well imagine it not being there. Whoops, like that. But that's where the D goes. Sometimes the hardest ones are when one of them is zero or you don't have one of them. Like what, how do I write it if the C is zero? It's amazing how sometimes it's easier when you have all of them because you know what to do. Any questions so far? Feels doable? Yeah? Okay, so we got one more graph to do and then you'll notice that there's um, a couple more examples. We're not gonna do all the examples but we'll do at least one of them, maybe two. We'll see how long it takes. 
but I'm going to get you to start this graph. Okay? So I will do the things along with you, but I want you, some of you are already doing this, maybe most of you, I don't know, but I want you to try a little bit on your own as well. So go for it. Even, like, even you think about what your goal is and just start it, just do the first one. So I saw so many of you immediately do this. It's great. The problem is with bigger questions, sometimes people just don't know where to start. And even just having that is really fantastic. Drawing in that zero line again is helpful because, and a lot of you already got this, that's great, uh, because from the zero line I can determine how far it goes down to get to the max and how far I go up to get to the, sorry, to down to the pin and up to get to the max um, and make sure that it's equal. And that's how I'm going to get my amplitude. That's the easiest way to get your amplitude. Now, it's three squares, but, how, but based on scale, how far was that? 1.5, right? So watch for that. It's an easy mistake to make, even if you know better. Why do we make that mistake? Because we're rushing. We're thinking about other things. Your brain's already moving on to the next step. What do I do next? And you just don't watch for that, right? So slow it down a little bit. Take your time. Easy mistake to make. What does that mean about our A value? Somebody who got the A value ready, tell us what else we have to watch for here. Anybody, anybody? How do I turn my amplitude into an A value in this case? Royce, what'd you say the A value was? Negative 1.5. Why negative? Because there's a reflection. You do not have to write out the word reflection. I'm doing it this one time for the lesson because therefore our A value is negative 1.5. When you go to write your final equation, I hope it jumps out at you that this sine curve is reflected and um, you would hopefully remember to include the negative, even if you missed it in the first place. The amplitude's not negative, just the A value. Good, keep going.
remember a big part of this process is not just knowing how to do everything, but knowing what to do, what to do next. Different people will approach it in different ways. Some of you may not even think of it as a start and the end. You may just think about it, well, what's the C value and look at where it starts. In this case, it starts right on a spot that's on the scale. So that's an easy one. So the start is negative 180. Therefore, C is negative 180. Uh, but sometimes we have to be careful of the scale. This scale is the same scale that we've been doing, but it's labeled differently. So we were labeling every three squares. This one's labeled every two for whatever reason. No idea why, it's just the way it is. Okay. Um, but knowing that that's something you have to do, and knowing how to do it, those are two parts to all of this, right? So you do need to be figuring out well, an order of steps of what to do so you don't get stuck and say, oh, now I don't know what to do next. That's part of this. Let's see where it ends. Ah, same thing, it's right on the scale, nice. Sometimes you can just look at the graph and kind of figure out what the period is. But if you can't, this is how you do it. The start and the end and the period, as we did the last two times, is 540 minus negative 180. Be careful that you get that negative in there. Otherwise, your period is going to be wrong. Two negatives makes positive. So this should work out too. 720, is that right? Awesome. And then use this to find our K value using our little formula. 1 half or 0 0.5. You would find um, that often they would use fractions in these, but if you put a decimal, that's not gonna be wrong. Now around a decimal, that will get you into trouble. So you might have to be, you might have to use fractions once in a while. But you can use your calculator hopefully to get the fraction and it won't be a problem. Do I have everything? I have everything. The nice thing about writing out the A, the K, the C, and the D with blanks is once they're all filled in, you know you're done. Just don't forget to write the actual formula because that's the whole point. Okay? Y equals, and it's flipped, so don't forget negative 1.5. It's sine, K value, big bracket, K value, small bracket, X plus 180, small bracket, big bracket, minus 1.5. It's amazing how since you're, you've already done some graphing and you've got confidence in it, this comes quickly, right? Feels normal, feels so all natural, it feels like familiar. Good, any questions? Okay, we'll do at least one of these. These ones are actually easier. Now there's two more uh, examples five and six that we're not going to do this year. Well, I'm going to show them to you and talk about them. You can try them if you want. Uh, there are some like that in the practice and uh, the solutions are there so you can check your answers. Uh, the reason why I think we do these ones with words is so we can do the harder ones with words. But these ones with words are, I think, easier than, uh, than looking at the graph. But some of you might not agree with me. You might like the graph. But really, it's just giving you all of the uh, variables that you need directly. Like when it says the amplitude is 4 and there's a reflection in the x-axis, well, that's telling us A is negative 4. Right? I don't need to do any work to figure that out. Uh, when it tells me the period is 270, I can find my k value. Actually, I'm going to do it like this. 360 over 270. And uh, I am going to get my calculator. 360 divided by 270. Because of how this calculator is set up, it's going to give me the fraction answer. So that's 4 over 3. Order that you do these again doesn't matter. I'm doing it in the, in the order of the questions. I'm just going along doing them left to right in the way they're given. Phase shift is 135 to the right. 
So that's a C value, positive 135. And a vertical translation up 3 means D is positive 3. Obviously, we don't need those plus signs in there. I'm adding them in for the lesson again to show that I thought of it. If they're negative, I've got to put the negatives in. But if they're positive, we don't need to worry about it. All right, so that was probably a less work, don't you think, than doing it in, from the graph? These are good ones. If you, you could even start with these ones in the homework if you wanted to. There's only a couple, but they're just good practice for writing out the equation properly. This question says, write the equation of the sine function. Otherwise, this could easily be a cosine function as well. There's nothing in there that tells us it's one or the other. Okay. And so A sine K. This is one where K has to be a fraction because 4 over 3 would be 1.33333 repeated. I don't want you to round and put that. X minus 135. It was a shift to the right, so it makes sense that you're subtracting plus 3. Okay, try the next one. All right, very good. So that is what you should have got. I hope that's right. You can tell me if I made a mistake. So the amplitude is one third. It's a fraction this time. We're not used to seeing that, but it's certainly possible. Okay, again, I did it in the order, so I did it in a different order. I did it in the order that the question says Vert vertical translation up six means D is positive six. Period is 180. Find K. 360 divided by the period. 360 over 180 works out to two. Phase shift left. 30. Some of you are going to wonder, you're going to like stop and pause and be like, oh, I can't remember. Is C supposed to be negative or positive? As long as you know what it's supposed to be in the equation, that's what I'm most worried about. But C will be the same as the direction. So when it says left, C is also negative, but it's positive, but it's X plus C in the equation. Write out the equation. Don't forget that. This one said cosine. Some of you write, might have written sine. I didn't actually look. Let's see if anybody did, but I could see that happening. You want to be careful of that on a test. But that's it. Any questions? I'm just going to talk about question five. The answers for this will be put up on the classroom. They're already up there. Why is it different? It doesn't give me the amplitude or the vertical translation, but it gives me information I can use to find it. It gives me the max and the min. So I will leave, but everything else is the same. I'll leave it to you if you want to ask how to do it later. Some of you might already be able to figure it out. Then you can ask me or I would challenge you if you're looking for a bit of a challenge to try to figure it out. How can you use that information to figure out where the what the amplitude is and what the d value is? That's what 
you would be trying to do. Maybe the easy way would be to find a grid and just plot those on a grid and think about and like visualize it. But you could do it with like a formula or a calculation as well. Okay, so there are two of those in the lesson, but we're not going to take the time to do them right now. Um, and there's a couple of those in the homework as well. Again, you can try them if you want, but you don't have to.